friends, my name is Jeff Yaldin. You may not know who I am, but I hope that changes. I hope that changes real soon. I look forward to meeting you and having the opportunity of working with your people on mental health or teenagers, those that work in mental health and validating the work that they do and who they are and the importance of their work. Anyway, I wanted to come by and introduce myself. For 23 years, I've had the privilege and honor of working with audiences all over the world. I've literally traveled 50 states and 48 countries. Most of my work has been in high school auditoriums and gymnasiums, working with students, teenagers, teachers, parents, and communities. But I'm here today to tell you about probably the past seven years I've really gotten into mental health. And it's interesting. I honestly think if I started mental health at the very beginning when I started speaking, I probably would be here speaking to you today. Matter of fact, something interesting happened not too long ago. I was invited to come into a community that had multiple suicides in one year. And during my talk with the person that was to bring me in, the conversation came up about my mental health. I thought that was interesting. It's the first and the only time that that's ever come up. I have a friend named Mike Vini, and he says that we need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Talk about mental health and the stigma that goes with it. Well, I think I've gotten comfortable. I don't think I've ever really been uncomfortable. Well, maybe I have been because had I not been, I probably would have started talking about my issues with mental health long ago. Well, mental health is very deep to my heart. I suffer from depression. As a matter of fact, I'm diagnosed with major depression. I've been diagnosed with anxiety and bipolar type 2 and PTSD. And I'm proud to say that I've never had an issue before any audience during any time I've been traveling. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about my work with mental health and teenagers and families and communities and teen suicide and suicide prevention is because I've been there. I go through it. I'm in counseling. I've been in counseling for 25 years. I'm in cognitive behavioral therapy and I take medication. I think the combination of both really works for me. One of the things that I share, and I'm very real in front of my audiences, but I'm passionate about my message because I share what I have to go through personally myself. And it's funny because you look at me and I look like a biker. As a matter of fact, what you're looking at right now, I'm a lot more professional than I used to be. Used to have a nice goatee, earrings, bald, but you can notice I've got tattoos. I'm big, bald, and beautiful. Anyway, one of the things that I share is, is how I go through my own ritual or, or my own therapy when I'm traveling or even when I'm home. Instead of being in that room that all is black and dark and dull and depressing, I talk about meditation, I talk about mindfulness training, I talk about breathing. Breathe in peace and exhale love into the world. I talk about yoga. As a matter of fact, I've got my yoga cards with me. Yeah, get to a hotel and after traveling, I just, you know, turn out the lights and here I got my cards and I can just do yoga kind of like in the dark and just where I can regroup and center myself, breathing, mindfulness, coloring, journaling. But you look at me, I'm a biker, but yet I'm into yoga. I'm a single digit handicapped golfer, but look at me, I don't look like a golfer. Yeah, wouldn't it be awesome if we lived in a world where we'd stop judging people based on the 5% that we knew about them? Yeah, wouldn't it be awesome if we lived in a world where we can learn to forgive as quickly as we judge? Yeah. Well, anyway, I wanted to come by and, and talk to you about who I am as a mental health speaker and who I am as an advocate for mental health. Oftentimes, I get the honor of coming into a community to work with teenagers and teach them how to bring down the anxiety and lower the stress of their daily lives through meditation, through just breathing, through simple things like just putting away the electronics at night. Turn it off. Get away. But I also get the phone calls where they invite me into a community after a school or community has suffered from a suicide or multiple suicides within that year. And I often wonder why. Why is it that they call me after when I wish more communities would be proactive and bring me in before? 
you bring me in before and I talk about life. I talk about how life is not fair and life is not perfect. Life will never be perfect. But I also give hope to those that need it. I give inspiration to those that are searching for it. I give answers to the questions that many young people are asking today. But so many communities wait till after when the community is up in arms saying, why, what are we gonna do? Why is this happening? This is your fault, let's do something. And then I get to come into a community and I give permission to people that they can move forward. Move forward through the process of grieving. Why I'm an administrator can't say, hey, little, listen, Johnny's not walking through the door anymore. When you bring an outsider in, I can talk about it. I can answer questions. I can give hugs. I can say, you know what, it's going to be okay. But we need to move forward now. This is what I do. I'm passionate about mental health, and I'm passionate about those that work in mental health, because if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be here today. I've been suicidal, I've been in the hospital twice. I go through some tough times. As a matter of fact, this past October, I had to go through major spinal cord fusion, hardest thing I'd ever gone through in my life. But you know what, it was probably the best thing I'd ever gone through. I lost my voice for three and a half months, I couldn't speak. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of people that were happy about that. <laughs> I certainly wasn't. I learned to become more present. I learned that I traveled so much over the years that my relationships have become very shallow. I learned a lot about me. But most importantly, I learned about what I wanted to now do. And I realized that as good as life is, life can change in an instant. So I spent a lot of time now working on me, who I am. Like I said, I am in therapy. I'll probably be in therapy for another 25 years and I'm gonna be happy to go through therapy for another 25 years because I embrace it. Unfortunately, there's a stigma that goes with mental health and I think we're gonna to have to deal with that stigma for many, many years to come. I don't think we're close. But it's people like yourself and me that together we can do something about it. Because I don't think mental health is an issue that an individual deals with. I think it's an issue that families deal with. And families need to embrace it. That's where it's going to start. But I also think mental health is an economic problem. And our government is going to have to take a major look at it and really put some dollars and some money and some attention towards it. I think when they start to put attention towards it, we're going to start to be able to make a difference in the world and the people. So, who am I? I'm Jeff Yald and I'm real. I'm passionate about mental health and the work that I do, not just with teens and teen suicide, but I'm passionate about talking to families and communities and people that work in the mental health field. I'm passionate about our youth that are suffering from depression and anxiety and the effects of our cell phones and social media today. I hope that our paths cross and we get to meet. I hope that we can meet on better circumstances than us meeting for suicide prevention or to move forward after a suicide. I hope that I can work with you at your next big event, your next conference, whether it be teens or adults, and I can help give hope and teach people mindfulness training and meditation. I can be a keynote speaker. I promise you, I change lives and I will make you a hero. I hope you go to my website, jeffyalden.com. And until we speak, you go out there and make it a great day. In the meantime, I just wanted to stop by and say, hi, I look forward to us meeting. Thanks so much.